Greetings all, this is Dominic, and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And it's the start of a new month, which means we're going to be taking a look back on the comic book haul from last month, July 2023. I have a handful of great pickups to show you today, but before we get started, I just want to shout out our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking for comic book collected editions, definitely check out their website. You can find the link in my description. And you can even use my code, the comic book report, at checkout to receive $2 off of your order. Please note if you do make a purchase using my link or code, I will earn a small commission, but it's a fantastic way to support the channel. Thank you so much for considering, now let's get started with this month's haul video. First up on our haul for last month, we have Twig Issue 1 by Scotty Young and Kyle Strom. I don't usually collect single issues, but this was thrown in from my order from Organic Price Books as a bit of a bonus, and I was excited to see it. Believe it or not, this is a series I had heard a little bit about, so having the first issue is a ton of fun. Scotty Young is definitely a prolific name in comic books. I know I've really enjoyed what I've read from his I Hate Fairyland series, amongst others. Uh, and this is a really unique title because this was written by Scotty Young, but not illustrated by Scotty Young. But interestingly enough, Strom's style for me in this book is really reminiscent of an I Hate Fairyland style, which was from Scotty Young. So that is just kind of an interesting wrinkle here. I can definitely see why these two collaborated if Scotty Young is in favor of his own style. I think Strom is definitely a worthwhile successor in many ways, and their collaboration just feels very true. I have not had a chance to really make my way through this issue, nor have I picked up any collected editions for this title, but I do think that this was a really great bonus issue I got from my sponsor this month, and it was fun to see. I thought I'd showcase it on the channel here. If you have read Twig, Definitely let me know in the comments. I am curious about it. I really think the art is vibrant, fun, and it has that fairy tale quality, which I always enjoy reading in fiction. At any rate, that's Twig Issue 1. Next up from our July haul, Junkyard Joe by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This collection is the next in his unnamed universe over at Image Comics. If you've read Geiger, also from Johns and Frank, this is within that same broader universe. Essentially, this story has a group of men fighting in the Vietnam War. One amongst their party is actually a robot, the titular Junkyard Joe. At any rate, things happen in the war, but we flash forward to the present day, where one of the veterans named Muddy Davis has gone on to become a very prolific comic book uh, writer, artist, and he's made a comic book title that's really akin to like Peanuts or Beetle Bailey, this kind of classic Americana newspaper strip comic that he's done for decades and decades and decades. The comic strip is called Junkyard Joe, and it's based on this robot who he fought alongside. However, in the decades since, he's kind of been led to believe that that was all part of his imagination, dealing with the trauma of war. Well, this robot shows up on his doorstep, and there are so many adventures that ensue. There's definitely much, much more to the storyline than what I've just painted, but that's a broad stroke synopsis of this work. I did a full review of this on my channel recently, if you'd like to take a look at it, but I had a blast reading this book. I actually even had the privilege of reviewing the first three issues prior to the first issue's release. Uh, really a great opportunity, so I was happy to go back and pick up the trade paperback collection. Like I said, this is part two in that unnamed universe uh, from Jeff Johns over at Image. I believe we're also getting one coming out soon called The Red Coat that I think is a revolutionary war era hero. Uh, Geiger, which I mentioned earlier, is kind of a dystopian future that follows kind of a nuclear-powered hero. It's a really interesting idea. Essentially, this unnamed universe is kind of a new faction of folk uh, heroes and tall tales for America spread all through Throughout time to deal with some upcoming crisis. Really, really cool stuff. 
Next up on our list, Eternals Volume 1, Only Death is Eternal, by Karen Gillan and Asad Ribic. This is a Marvel comic series that I was looking forward to checking out. It's a trade paperback, as you can see, collecting, I believe, the first six issues of this run. I know this all culminates, I believe, in the AXE Judgment kind of crossover event between Eternals, Avengers, and X-Men. I haven't had the opportunity to read that yet, but I had heard a lot of positive reviews views on this run so I was able to get a copy of this volume one to check out I will say I don't know if I was missing something but this didn't really strike me necessarily I did love the art style I think the storytelling overall was very strong from Gillen but I had a hard time connecting with the characters I think that there was a coldness with some of them that it just made me feel frankly a little bit detached that being said I think it was still a terrific mystery story it has some really fun kind of science fiction elements elements. And as someone who actually really enjoyed the MCU Eternals film overall, I was eager to jump into the world of Eternals. This was my first time reading an Eternals comic book, and overall, it was still a good experience, even if this left a little bit more to be desired for me. Uh, the trade paperback itself was really well constructed, pretty standard fare from Marvel, um, but overall, you know, pretty solid. I know Ribic is someone who I've seen illustrate other works in the past, like Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman which I also reviewed on the channel once upon a time. So it was great seeing that kind of dreamy, surrealistic looking art style attached to something like Eternals. I think it just really works. Uh, Gillen as well, I've really enjoyed from works of his like Once in Future and so many more. Uh, so this was definitely worth checking out, even if it wasn't a favorite from me. And hey, if you're enjoying this haul video and you also like things like comic book reviews, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I try to release a few videos a week. Anyway, it'd be great to have you. Now on with the video. Next up, Superman for All Seasons by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. This is a DC comic I have wanted in my collection forever. I had an opportunity to read this years and years ago. I think I borrowed a friend's copy or perhaps read it digitally. I really can't even remember anymore. All I knew was that I didn't have this in my personal collection in any format. So I went to a used bookstore this last month and found a copy for a really affordable price and I snatched it up. I couldn't wait to revisit this and I was so happy I did. In fact, I think I even enjoyed it more upon rereading. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale are a powerhouse creative team that I've really enjoyed their work in the past. Of course, Batman The Long Halloween and Dark Victory, Spider-Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow, and so many more titles. Uh, so this one is just a classic piece of Americana. I really like seeing the stripped down color palette from Tim Sale this time. It really punched out when we had that juxtaposed with the still very vibrant Superman colors, that red, blue, and yellow. But I think I think the rest of the world felt a little more muted, which really, really worked. I don't really even know how to describe it. You really have to see it for yourself. This is a really stripped down Superman origin story that really works. You get to see some of the best of Clark Kent. We get a terrific introduction to Lex Luthor and Lois Lane and some of these just Superman staples. I think revisiting this again, I just loved so much more about it. I love how they even break down the story. It's a four issue mini series, one for each of the seasons of the year. And it really just even thematically explores the ideas of those seasons. Seasons while also looking at the seasons of Superman's life. It really is just a modern masterpiece. If you're a fan of Superman and you have not read For All Seasons, it is a 100% recommendation from me. Next on our haul for this last month, Star Wars Hidden Empire from Charles Sewell. Okay, admittedly, I am still newer to the world of Star Wars comics, but I've dabbled a little bit. I've read and reviewed things on the channel, like the Star Wars by Jason Aaron Omnibus. I read a Darth Vader trade paperback, I believe also from Charles Sewell a while ago. But I also read War of the Bounty Hunters. That was a trade paperback collection I picked up. I did not read the Omnibus. But I read the trade paperback and really, really loved it. And it really introduced me to some of the ideas that we would see Charles Soule explore with some of the follow-up Star Wars comics we have. Basically, 
War of the Bounty Hunters is the first part of essentially a trilogy from Sewell. So we had War of the Bounty Hunters, followed by Crimson Reign, and now we have Hidden Empire. It follows the character of Kira, which has been in some of those previous works, along with debuting in the Solo movie, if you're a fan of the film franchise. At any rate, this is a really cool character. I love the setup we got in War of the Bounty Hunter. I continued with Crimson Rain, and even though I didn't enjoy it as much, I really want to see how this trilogy culminates, so I had to pick up Hidden Empire. Now, I am just starting my read-through of this book at the time of the recording. I've read about an issue, and so far, I'm just trying to get back connected into this world and this character. Uh, I think that I'm hoping this doesn't function on diminishing returns. I really loved War of the Bounty Hunter. I hope we can end this trilogy strong, but I really will see how I feel about it. I'm planning to review this when I do finish it. I know that Star Wars comics aren't for everyone, but I know that there's a handful of even my watchers here on YouTube who really, really enjoy the Star Wars comics. So I'm happy to pick this up and review it for all of you, and for myself, frankly. It's fun to explore this world. But let me know if you've read Hidden Empire already. Let me know what you think. I'd be really curious to know. Next up on our haul... Punisher Epic Collection Circle of Blood. This is the Volume 2 for the Punisher Epic Collection line, but it does debut his first solo series, to my knowledge, so this, for me, felt like a terrific place to jump on board the character. I will say that this is my only solo Punisher comic in my collection. I've read him when he's crossed over with other comics. I've read his debut issue in Amazing Spider-Man. I've read a couple of those Daredevil Punisher team-ups, which I'm a fan of, loving Daredevil. And overall, I think he's a fascinating character. I've always wanted to explore more of the Punisher, but I haven't really had or made an opportunity to pick up a lot of his solo stuff, but I had an opportunity to get this, and I jumped on it. I couldn't wait to check it out. Right now, at the time of the recording, I may be halfway into this epic collection, almost halfway, and I'm frankly loving it so far. A lot of these stories are from the mid-80s, uh, so it's definitely a different time in comics. If you only read modern books, it will feel a little bit dated, but for my money, it definitely still feels very fast paced it feels very gritty and fun um, and it really just showcases things about the Punisher I've enjoyed in other works. Um, so really excited to read this. I know Punisher Max gets a lot of recommendations as well. I know Punisher in general is a character that a lot of uh, the watchers out there really, really enjoy. You'll have to let me know what you think of Circle of Blood if you've read it. Like I said, so far I'm enjoying it. I will do a full review of this once I complete it. Uh, but let me know your Punisher recommendations. Let me know. Uh, I know, again, Punisher Max is when I get recommended to me all the time but maybe there's some hidden gems out there what have you got what can you recommend let me know if you're a fan of the punisher um, but again the art here i really like it it's really just classic 80s art throughout uh, i think the narrative has been really fun so far i get a lot of just different little story arcs um, and we just follow frank castle on all his exploits it's been really interesting and i'm super eager to review it Next up on our haul, Guardians of the Galaxy by Al Ewing. Now this is a complete collection trade paperback. It's about the size of a Marvel Epic collection, coming in around 500 pages, give or take. But this is the complete Al Ewing Guardians run, along with that Rocket miniseries, uh, all in one trade paperback. I am a bit surprised this didn't get an oversized hardcover or omnibus treatment, maybe sometime in the future. I am newer to Guardians of the Galaxy as well. In fact, the only real Guardians comics I've read is that Brian Michael Bendis omnibus volume one, which I reviewed a few months back on the channel. At any rate, I really liked the movies, I really enjoyed what I read of that Bendis run, and so I was looking for an opportunity to read more Guardians of the Galaxy comics. I had heard Ewing's run and that name thrown around recently. I know this is a more modern run as well, uh, but this seems to be really well regarded by a lot of fans out there, and so I had an opportunity to pick up this complete trade paperback, and I was super excited. Uh, I will be reviewing this, both a overview version for Organic Price Books, but also a full review on my channel. It will probably be in the next month or two, uh, but I have enjoyed what I've dabbled with so far. I'm still in that early Rocket Raccoon miniseries, it's been really fascinating so far, but I am eager to jump into the run proper. 
even on the front of this issue, you could see Doctor Doom. I'm fascinated how he's going to tie in with Guardians of the Galaxy. I love that character from the Fantastic Four. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to get him involved with Guardians. Uh, for those out there who have been read this run, let me know what you think. Again, uh, I've heard good things. I've heard a generally good buzz. But I was excited to jump back into Cosmic Marvel and really more modern Cosmic Marvel. Uh, I know I just actually finished the Annihilation Omnibus, which I'll probably be review sometime uh, not too far from now. At any rate, it's really awakened this hunger for to read a lot more Cosmic Marvel, especially the modern stuff, so I'm eager to get into this run and I'll hopefully review it all for you soon. Next on our list, Superman American Alien by Max Landis. This was a fantastic month for me for Superman between this and Superman for All Seasons. I loved this book. This is another kind of Superman origin retelling, but we bounce around basically a handful of Superman short stories at different eras in his early life and early superherohood. Each issue is written by Max Landis, but each one has a very different artist and artistic style. There is this kind of thematical title naming thing for each issue, where each issue is named after a bird of some kind. But anyway, we have one issue that follows his exploits as a child when he first is kind of learning to fly. We have another kind of crime-looking story with a murder that happens in Smallville. We have him kind of partying his college era. We have early days in Metropolis, early superheroic ages. I think it's a seven or eight issue miniseries, but this was just an absolute blast. I adored this book, loved, loved, loved going through it and reading it and reviewing it for all of you. I think for me, this will go down as one of my all-time favorite Superman stories. It's just so breezy and fun. I think having all of the different artists but the same writer, you have this uh, just really cohesive vision, but a very, very eclectic mix of just storytelling styles and experiences as you read it and see all the different uh, artists do their thing. It's a really great experience. I would recommend this to any Superman fan out there or anyone who wants to get into Superman. It's really fun fresh and it feels modern and fun. It really captures a lot of what makes not only Superman great, but Clark Kent as a character. I also think just for general comic book fans, this is a really notable read. I think it's a fantastic DC comic and it makes me want other superheroes to get this kind of treatment. A really great pickup this month. Next for our July haul, Catwoman Lonely City by Cliff Chiang. This is part of DC Comics' Black Label. It's a four-issue miniseries that takes place in a future dystopian Gotham City. Uh, basically, Catwoman has been in prison for the last ten years, and we follow her as she is released and trying to get back into the world she once knew. Ten years ago, there was a horrible event called Fool's Night, where a bunch of Gotham's heroes and some of its villains were killed in basically a large terrorist attack. And basically, Catwoman was in jail from that point onward up until the events of this book. Uh, we follow her as an aging Catwoman trying to find her bearings and basically help solve Batman's last little riddle he gave her. Uh, it's a really touching story, a lot of great reflections on life and aging and grief. Uh, just a really interesting story. This was both written and illustrated by Cliff Chiang. We have a really fun oversized format. It's a bit boxier, uh, wider in the way, uh, similar to something like Harleen or Fantastic Four Full Circle, if you've seen those format size. At any rate, it's a really vibrant and beautiful book. I've read other stuff that was illustrated by Chiang in the forms of Paper Girls and his run with Brian Azzarello on Wonder Woman. Those were really fun titles from what I had read. I love Chiang's style, and I was really eager to read a book that was both written and illustrated by him. This is another example of a book that had such positive reviews. I put it immediately on my wish list. I was so excited for a chance to read it this month. I will plan to review it sometime soon as well on the channel for those interested but this is just a gorgeous book an absolute art piece a love letter to gotham city in many ways and frankly it's probably my favorite single standalone catwoman story i've ever had the opportunity to read absolutely incredible i think it's going to be a modern classic 
Okay, now onto the Omnibus editions I picked up in July 2023. First up, we have the 52 Omnibus from DC Comics. This was something as well I've been wanting to read for a while. I at one point had the first trade paperback collection of 52. I'd read a little bit of it. Essentially, this follows up the events of Infinite Crisis, which I had read the whole Omnibus and reviewed that last month. At any rate, this is a follow-up to Infinite Crisis. It's a year where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are all kind of behind the scenes or gone. And in that year, other heroes emerge and other conflicts happen. The novelty about this book is that each issue was released uh, one week after another for 52 weeks in a total year chronologically. Uh, and each issue, my understanding is, takes place in that week. And I really love that approach. So this whole omnibus is essentially a year in the world of DC Comics. We follow a lot of just secondary or tertiary heroes, but as the primary leads. And it's supposed to be a really, really fun look at not only the DC Universe, but some of these heroes that maybe were marginalized that should be given uh, more of a chance to shine. I know characters like Booster Gold, uh, Black Adam, The Questions, some of these characters that maybe did not have that much popularity before 52 were definitely given more of a stage. I think Steel also has a role here. I'm still just breaking into this collection, but I'm really eager to read it. I love the novelty of it. We have some outstanding creators attached to this book. You probably saw on the front cover, but people like Jeff Johns, Grant Morrison, Greg Rucka, Mark Wade, and more, I believe. Just a really outstanding looking book. It's a heavy book, a big book. This might take me a while to get through. So if you're interested in me reviewing it, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop it. And let me know in the comments, hey, if you want me to do a review. Next up, Batman Black and White Omnibus from DC Comics. This is another book that I've been so curious about for such a long time. I had the first trade paperback volume of Batman Black and White, and frankly, it was such a fun collection. In fact, that collection opens with one of my favorite Batman stories of all time. I don't want to spoil the details of that story too much in this video, but this collection essentially is another kind of art piece collection in many ways. It's a bunch of short Batman stories that are written and illustrated by various different creators, and they all just have these little snapshots of Batman stories. Uh, they might not all be canonical, but they are all just about fascinating. I haven't had a chance to read all the stories in this collection yet, but I plan to. This book, I believe, collects the first five volumes of Batman Black and White. I think the back says it has all of it, but I think that they did release a volume six trade paperback. Uh, not quite clear on that, but uh, at any rate, this is a huge, huge, huge collection of Batman Black and White. I love the idea for a series like this. I love that we get just so many different industry greats tackling Batman in that shorter format. In the same way short stories and novels are different, I think these short collections really help them uh, just crystallize and make succinct uh, storytelling mechanics and what they want to convey as swiftly as possible. Uh, a lot of the stories in here are great as just standalone reads, and I'm eager to just read more and more of them. Uh, let me know if you've read this omnibus I feel like this is a Batman omnibus that a lot of collectors overlook or decide not to pick up. So I am really excited to have it in my personal collection. I love the look of it. I think the design work all the way through is just outstanding. There is a classic feel to it. There's kind of an eeriness to that black and white. I don't know how to describe it, uh, but it fits Batman. And I'm really eager to just continue through this black and white Batman omnibus. Next up on our July haul, Grayson, the Super Spy Omnibus by Tim Seeley, Tom King, and Mikkel Janin. This is an absolute fun one, another one I've been wanting to check out for some time. Essentially, the conceit or general idea behind this is that Dick Grayson has dropped the mantle of Nightwing, and he's a straight-up James Bond-esque super spy. There is some added wrinkles because the organization he is spying for is kind of shady, and we find out that he's sort of an undercover agent trying to get information for Batman to try to topple a very corrupt organization. At least that's what it appears to be after the first issue or two of this book. I am still making my way through it, but so far it's been a blast. 
all the creators attached to this are favorites of mine, or at least ones that I've enjoyed reading previous works from. So to have them all together for this series and following a character I really enjoy, of course I'm talking about Dick Grayson, this seemed like a no-brainer for me and one I knew I always wanted to check out. I think chronologically this takes place after the Kyle Higgins New 52 Nightwing run and before the events, I believe, of Nightwing Rebirth era, uh, but it's a really interesting time in the history of this character. I think he still feels absolutely like Dick Grayson, but to see him in a super spy world, this James Bond fan, well, frankly, I'm having a blast reading this. I love the concept. I do think it's a little strange, a little out there, but so far it really appears to be working. I'm only a handful of issues in, but I I'm totally glued to it. I feel like it's so hard to put down and not just keep reading it. A really, really fun book. Another one I will plan on reviewing once I do complete it. I would like to know out there, are there any Grayson fans? Has anyone read this run? Let me know in the comments. Let me know how you think it compares to his normal Nightwing stuff. I'd be really excited to see discussion on that in the comments. Next up, a Marvel omnibus, Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick. Now, this is my first solo Captain Marvel reading experience, and so far, this is a lot of fun as well. I'm maybe 12 or 13 issues into this omnibus, so I still have a ways to go, but so far, it's a really fun exploration of Carol Danvers' character. My understanding is this is the first real solo run where she takes on that mantle of Captain Marvel as opposed to Miss Marvel or Binary or all of these other superhero identities she's had in the past, but it is a real blast so far. There does seem to be a lot of changing artists on this book so far, even with everything basically being written by Kelly Sue DeConnick. The different artists definitely keep me on my toes. There's definitely some pretty hard transitions from artists book to book or story to story at least. Uh, but so far the art styles are really interesting and stylized. I'm actually really enjoying it. As all of the artists change hands, it's definitely cool to look at the strengths of the different artists, and I think that Kelly Sue DeConnick is doing a great job at the characterizations for not only Carol Danvers, but her supporting cast of characters. I'm really interested, even not knowing a lot about uh, Carol Danvers. Uh, what I do know, I do see just flourishing under DeConnick's run so far. It's been a really memorable reading experience to me. I really enjoy it. I know a lot of people also like Kelly Thompson's run, which I believe follows this one at some point, uh, but I really am liking this omnibus. I wanted to read more from this character, and there seems to be a lot of Captain Marvel omnibuses out on the shelves right now, so I'm really eager that I got to pick up a copy here. Uh, so far, again, a very, very interesting read. I did like the movie, too. I know for some reason this character gets a lot of hate. Um, I have also even heard polarizing things about this author, uh, but so far, everything I'm reading in text in these issues, I've really enjoyed. I'm really, really liking this omnibus, and I look forward to reviewing it in the future. And finally, to round out our July haul, Superior Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 by Dan Slott over at Marvel Comics. This was a much-anticipated pre-order for me. This is an era of Spider-Man history I've always wanted to dabble in. I had only ever read an issue or two of Superior Spider-Man, so reading it here from the beginning of the Superior run is amazing. I am making my way through a handful of the issues as I'm recording this. I'm, you know, in the second or third story arc, I believe, but so far it's really strong. Essentially, the conceit of this is that Doc Ock has entered the body of Peter Parker and has become a, air quotes, superior Spider-Man. He's basically impersonating Peter Parker and just making his way through New York as the not-so-friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I think that this is a really fascinating idea for the character, and I think narratively, I get to see Spider-Man do and go through a lot of things I've never encountered before. Uh, the art is absolutely gorgeous throughout. I really like the style. It is a little bit more animated than art styles I usually enjoy, but for some reason, I am just really digging it for this omnibus. I am, again, having a ton of fun reading this. It is a volume one, but to my knowledge, this collects the entirety of that initial Dan Slott Superior Spider-Man era, uh, so I'm excited to read through that in earnest here. Uh, let me know if you're a fan of 
the Superior Spider-Man in the comments below. I am a huge Spider-Man fan, so this has definitely been on my need-to-read list for years and years now. I'm so excited Marvel decided to release an omnibus. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think the format, the cover design, everything in this book is just beautiful, and I'm really enjoying my reading experience so far. I love, love, love seeing this different take on Spider-Man. Okay, and that's going to round out our July 2023 comic book haul. This was definitely a great month. I'm so thankful for some of these titles I was able to get copies of. I know that there were a couple really anticipated reads here, some pre-orders here I was really eager for, and a really good sampling this time of hardcovers and paperbacks, uh, DC and Marvel, uh, and I really, really like that. I like that I got kind of a good sampling of different titles this month. Some months are lighter or heavier than others. This this was definitely a much bigger comic book haul month. Uh, next month will probably be a little bit smaller. But at any rate, let me know in the comments what you picked up last month, what you're hoping to pick up this month. If you've read any of these titles, I would as always be interested in your feedback in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to give this video a like, a comment, and maybe check out one of my other videos. Have a good one.